Welcome to another episode of Systematic Geekology. This is a space where we seek to create and cultivate healthy conversations between those things we geek out on and the philosophical and theological questions that often arise out of our fandoms. Like, what does it mean to be human? What makes a hero? What makes a villain? How do the stories and narratives we geek out on shape how we live in the world? We are your priest to the geeks. We aren't all ordained, but we see ourselves as mediators at the intersection of geek culture and going deeper in our faith. We don't always have to agree, but we do respect each other, and we see everyone as a beloved child of God. Everyone geeks out on something, so come geek out with us and enjoy the show. You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. What's better than camping? Maybe camping with a few of your friends who might have to have superpowers along with you. Better yet, fighting for your lives and wondering if one of your friends have gotten eaten. We are talking about the Forest Training Art Camp here on Systematic Geekology. We are the Priests of the Geeks. My name is Elizabeth Payne Clyde, and I am joined with my co-host, the one, the only, TJ Blackwell. How are you doing, TJ? Good. Thank you for saying my name. Uh, your legit like government name? Not your yeah. Josh? Rarely name. happens. Well, you know, I try. I try and help you out every now and then. And I am Elizabeth Payne Clyde, which is almost my government name. TJ, what have you been geeking out on lately? Um, actually, Pal World. You're not going to say Valorant. Valorant wow, I don't even know how to react right now. Yeah, it's just new and it's fun and possibly AI generated, but definitely mostly a rip off of Pokemon. So it's nice. a great time. <clears throat> have you seen that new like Pokey Resort or something on Netflix? Have you watched that yet? I watched oh, the I first haven't. episode. It's very cute. No, yeah, uh, it looks cute. So I, yes, that's it. It's just super cute. I don't know if you can tell on my voice listeners, but I am once again sick. So I have been geeking out on rest and hydration and modern family because I, when I don't feel good, I just want to laugh and modern family has all the laughs. Have you seen that um, show? Yeah. I used to watch modern family all the time. It's so funny. So if you guys haven't, that's a recommendation too. But going into, this is probably one of my like favorite arcs, just because who doesn't love a good camping trip? Yeah. Have and also the, the wild, wild pussycats. I love yeah, them. Yeah, that one too. That one too. They're, they're kind of cringy in a yeah. way, but that's what makes them lovable. Do you have any fun, fond camping stories? I've been camping with Josh a lot. Like legit forest camping or church camp camping? Like forest camping, island okay. camping forest mountain that we, we've done we've done most of it. it we've done all of those and most types of camping okay but one time uh one time joshua noel and i had to share a one person tent Ooh. because of a slight logistics oversight did you cuddle no we both slept on our shoulders and neither of us moved at all for the entire night sounds romantic it was so but, but if you were wondering you can fit two people inside a one person tent without them touching each other Wow. Impressive. So no, no death. Not that time. Okay. Okay. Good to know. My fondest camping is like Girl Scout camping, which is ironic that I bought seven boxes of Girl Scout cookies today. Yes, it was seven. Um, no, I am not ashamed. And yes, a box is already in my tummy, but you got to do what you got to do. Very fond memory of trucking it and camping, but also no death, which did not happen here in the My Hero Academia camping trip. Do you remember how this arc started off? Uh, it starts off with the hero incident, right? Um, I'm trying to think. I When I remember it, I remember them going to the camping site. This is my very first. And they didn't realize that the test or the camping training already began. And they had to literally go through the forest to get into their, um, to get to pretty much to dinner and to the resort. Do you remember that? Yeah, so yeah. I was just, I'm, I'm not sure if beforehand happened the what you just said i think so i think that's where it technically starts okay okay um i don't know it just made me feel like very yu yu haka show whenever they had to go through the forest and whatnot so brought some nostalgia to me 
Yeah, and I love Yu Yu Hakusho. So good. Have you seen so the live much action? Better than my hero. I haven't. It, you're not wasting much time. It's fun to watch live action, but you're not. It's not one piece. It looks pretty good, like from the trailer that I actually watched for once. Yeah, I mean, it's good. not bad, but it's just not one piece. But going back on topic, the Wild Wild Pushy Cats. Which one is your favorite one? The dude. What was his name again? Don't even remember. Doesn't I don't matter. Because. I'm trying to think of his powers too. So I don't recall them as often, but I just remember them being very cringy. So they go into um, what they think is just a training camp, 1A. Remind me, is 1, 1B is there too, right? Or no? Mm-hmm. It's 1A yeah, and 1B. They're both there. So we get to um, see a little bit more of them. And that's where we kind of meet. So that's episode 39, the introduction. And then 40, we meet the Wild Wild Pussycats and they go through the forest. But this is a big character that comes in that's not too big is Kota. And I hated this little brat. Yeah, no, he used to make me so mad, actually. Yeah, so listeners, if you have not watched this, um, Kota is a young boy living in the forest who strongly dislikes Hero. He's the nephew of one of the Wild Wild um, Pussycats. And of course, Deku being the guy who wants to be friend and hero to all, Deku tries, Deku tries really, really hard to understand his feeling um, towards Hero's, Coda's feelings. And Coda just ends up, didn't he like kick him in the balls? Yep. The very he, first punched time? Him, I think he punched him in the balls. Uh, punched him in the balls. Which is a lot more insulting to me. Okay. Well, I, I have no comments on that. So I mean, like, I I'm guess it's take not your when you're a kid as much, but if an adult punches you in the balls, that's, you went through so much extra effort to make like hand contact you had to, like, with yeah. the drools. Right. So instead of just kicking, you know, you got to like squat. Right. TJ, tell us a little bit about why Coda does not like Hero since we love this kid so much. Uh, well, if I'm remembering right, uh, he's, you know, he's his uncle is or his aunt is one of the blah, blah, pussy cats. And mm-hmm. they weren't able to save his parents, I think, is what happened and is why he's like disillusioned with the whole thing. Well, no, his parents were also heroes. Mm yeah and so the the parents went <clears throat> and was heroic and ended up dying in the yeah. battle so i mean that's some traumatic stuff right there yeah i mean it's a you know that's a skill issue i mean a skill like that's on the, them the parents yeah it's their fault why would you say that because they just weren't strong enough yeah they just weren't strong enough would you say that the same as a policeman dying in the line of battle or a fireman dying in a fire in the line of battle what are you what are you trying to make me say here i'm just asking i was like wow i, I was shocked when you said like they would just weren't strong enough i think it's a little bit different you think so yeah well with coda what's so traumatic i remember this because as someone with parent issues um they said we'll be right back or they said something along the mm. lines of you know we're gonna go get the bad guy or something so you're kind of like building that false hope and that false security that you are invincible. So I think of um, like even like parents, whenever you're thinking of a little kids without your parents being heroes, you think they're always going to come back home. You think everything is going to be fine. Well, hopefully um, you think everything's going to be fine if you have like that image of your parents. And so pretty much they lied. So not only, and his parents was heroes. So it's not even about he- his parents being liars. Heroes are all liars or they're fakes because his parents couldn't um, developed so i mean that's mentally taxing for a little boy yeah that has to be exhausting and Stood. like then you get taken in by other heroes that aren't dead mm-hmm. and let's be honest the wild wild pussycats are kind of lame in my opinion like they're funny but they're not they're not breaking the charts on top heroes they're good at what they do though they're really they are. good at what they do. and so that's one thing i like with the diversity of heroes just kind of how you're not going to send a baker in to a fire. You know what I mean? You might send a chef into a third world country to help, like, you know, with the food shortage or whatnot, but you're not going to send someone in who doesn't have the skills to not to disarm something else. So what the Wild Wild Pussycats are good at is their base is in the forest. So they are search and rescue hikers who get lost. Or if there's like a mudslide or anything like that, they can help um, evacuate. So that's their be- bread and butter. They're not really, let's go out and fight the bad guys. I just I love it when anime or shows do this and they like make like mountain rescue a really big deal because it is in Japan. It's like the mountain rescue squad is like it's like how, like how we view firefighters. Mm-hmm. I mean, they save so, lives just as yeah. much as someone trying to disarm a bank robber. 
Yeah, it's cool. If, if not we just even don't do more. that in America as well. Well, I don't know. If, I mean, maybe in Colorado, but we don't live where the mountains are. So we don't really hear about those stories. You don't live where the mountains are. Sir, you live barely upstate South Carolina. There's not very much mountains there. I can see one from my balcony. But not like the Blue Ridge or anything like that. It's not like hikeable. You st- you're still like a little drive from the mountains. Yeah, barely. It's like, it's like 30 minutes. Okay, fine. I'll give you that. I'll go to King's Mountain, Crowder's Mountain, Table Rock. Okay, I forgot you're close to Table Rock. That's a good mountain. But even though Coda's a jerky pants, does not give him the right to punch a dude in the balls. Uh, I mostly agree, yeah. Yeah, so. But still don't like the dude. Um, you kind of find out a little bit more as the episodes digress about what happens to Coda's backstory. And just with anything, um, once you kind of hear the backstory, you become empathetic towards people. Um, same with really any scenario. Like if you don't turn in, if a kid doesn't turn in their homework assignment to me and they don't give me any explanation, I'm going to give them a zero. If they give me an explanation like, hey, my grandpa's in the hospital. Hey, this is happening. Hey, this is why I couldn't do my homework assignment. Now that I know your story, I can extend grace, but I'm not going to know unless you tell me. And of course, Coda is not telling us the aunt was what explained his story. But throughout all of this, and around, I think, episode 42, which is almost the middle of the arc, the League of Villain initiates a surprise attack on the training camp. So the students once again, have to face all these top villains that the heroes don't even have to face. So, I mean, that's just like anime, though. Why mm-hmm. would the top villains be there? I mean, the top heroes be there when the villains come. No. Yeah. I don't know. This To me, this is where the series started to feel a little bit more real for our students. It's like, oh, no, they, they really want they really want to kill these kids. Yeah. <clears throat> and they're going after the generation. So I kind of think of the youth and social media too. Like if you really want to do damage, go after the youth because they are going to be the culture of tomorrow. They're going to be the leaders of tomorrow. And so that's exactly what the league of villain is doing. And of course, a lot of the um, students, some of them are kind of like the B list characters as Bakugo would say, the extras, they kind of stay in the back. Um, They get trapped, not trapped, but the teachers are corralling them. And then the students who are still in the, forest they ha- they're trying to come come back because they don't have the permission to fight just yet and this is where we see a few um villains we we haven't seen like the powers we haven't seen before like that teeth guy creeps me out do you remember him yes i hate that dude Not and i was this the first time it, it kind of got this anime started turning to the darker side because yeah. the the teeth guy it was the indie window that he will eat you and then we saw a hand. And so we didn't know who he ate. And I'm not going to say um, what happened because that's revealed later in the series. But it's just very much, I remember being disturbed by the scene a lot. Because his teeth was like his spider legs or something like that, right? That's kind of how they made it. Mm. Uh, I hated it. It's so gross. It actually, um, this is another tangent, of course. Let's go. Uh started reading uh, Demon... Demons of the Far Realms, which is uh, by the author of Full Metal Alchemist. I never remember her name, but uh, it's really good. But one of the first demon pairs you see is the top and bottom half of a mouth. Not a fan. Mm-mm. Anything with the mouth, I just don't like it. Don't like them. That's why I stand behind my mic. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. And it looks like my mic has a mustache. <laughs> and stuff. But okay, so then we have that. We see a little bit more of who's the um, girl with the blood who likes to drink blood? Toga. Toga. So we see a little bit more of her um, trying to like get her samples. But I don't think we know the extent of her power just yet, do we? So Not even close. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, we just know that she does something with blood and she's trying to like get it. Yeah, I think here is where we see her like, I think this is where we see her like copy someone else for the first time but Mm -hmm. just physically Mm -hmm. yeah because um the the guy who has the scars didn't he like turn into mud or something so she imitated him Mm -hmm. that that was it i can't think of his name well i can't think of his villain name right now so okay and who else i'm trying to make sure we got all the villains because really the villain Mm. shined this episode muscular 
Um, that was it. That's who I um so And mustard. Mustard. Yeah, mustard's the dude who like gasses it, the students. Mm, that was it. Yep, the gas. Which really Momo comes in clutch because she's able to like make gas masks with her lipids. And so the yeah. students are trying to escape, but then the teachers they find out because remember there's only what like two or three teach two teachers and three heroes. But once yeah. again, search and rescue, they're not equipped to fighting uh, actual legit villains in a head to head fight. They get the go ahead to to fight back. And somewhere along the line, um, Deku just knew to look for Kodo, Kota for some reason. He saw Kota was not back at the at the um, at the inn or wherever it was called. And of course, just how how anime is written. They released someone from prison to help them with their big invasion. And it so happens to be the guy who killed Kota's parents. I'm trying to think of his name. That's muscular, isn't it? He, it, it, it is muscular? Yeah. Okay. I've, yeah, that's his, that's his name. Muscular. I didn't know. It was he's, just, he's I thought you were just describing him. Okay. Yeah. Mm, muscular. His name is muscular. He's super lazy. So, of course, Deku comes in the neck of time. And I feel like this is one of the ones with Deku, like, he should not have won this fight. Would you agree? Yeah, no shot. Muscular is. Uh, we found out find out later that he's still like super super strong and relevant when he like he breaks out of prison with the, with the rest of them way later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, muscular should have just slapped him off that mountain, easy peasy. Yeah, Deku should have died because of course Deku does what he does best: not control his power and breaks all his arms, breaks his legs then even continues to punch through his broken arms and legs and whatnot and ends up beating the dude. But I'm like, there's just, there was no way, no way it should have yep. happened. Yep. So at least we agree on that. So he saves Kota, but then he's still trying to go out and save Bakugo because they did some kind of interfering and they know that the league of villains is after Bakugo. And um, I just remember who was carrying him. It was the muscular guy who found him, not, the one who died, the the one with the mini limbs. Yeah, uh, I never remember his name. I don't either. I'm really bad at names with my hero academia. I remember like the the favorite five, and yeah, every, everyone's just extras. Yeah, he just he does not get screen time. He does later, and I and watched this like forever ago. And he's like pretty impressive, like being able to. He has a great search and rescue qualities, and he has great fighting qualities. Yeah, but he's awesome. He's so cool. I still wish I had the um, power of the sugar guy who can convert sugar into energy. I think his name is Sugar Rush. Yep. He sucks, though. He does suck, if you think about it. He needs cake, but I want that power. I just want an excuse to eat cookies and cake all the time. You don't need one. You can just do that. I do just do that. I just ate a whole box of Girl Scout cookies, but it's fine. So the battle between um, it is still raging. They are kind of the villains are kind of losing. A little bit head to head, but they're coordinated. And so they are almost rescuing Bakugo, but it didn't go. Do you remember how ba they got Bakugo at the end? They used some kind of trick, didn't they? Like, was, to it, get... was it the magic dude with his beads? Is that how they got him? Yeah, they like they knocked a bunch of them out and put Bakugo in a bead. Mm -hmm. And then he picked, um, Deku picked the wrong bead. Yeah. That was it. And so Bakuko is now captured and it just makes it look bad. Like with the whole, now the UA's reputation is tarnished. The teacher's reputation is tarnished. Um, and then like the morale is down. And then um, the teachers are just saying, wait. But of course, Midoriya Todoroki Ida decides to like try and launch a rescue mission to try and save Bakugo, um in this time. And so everyone's just saying, wait, because it's all politics now. And yeah. I'm not sure exactly when this arc officially ends, because I know the rescue team faces a variety of challenges as they infiltrate the League of Villains, I'm reading my notes, and the hero and trainees encounter unexpected twists and confronts powerful villains in their quest to save Bakugo. So I'm pretty sure we don't know what happens at this point. This is how they, they end the the forest training. So Bakugo is now gone and we have failed epically. 
<laughs> Hello, friends. If you enjoy systematic ecology, a great way to support us and to keep us moving forward into the future is to be a patron on our Patreon network. If you're a Patreon, then you get live access to our YouTube exclusives like comic book ketchup and manga mustard, drinks with Tejas, and also uh, some extra content there with our companion series to go along with our annual theme. If you're a patron, you get exclusive merch like t-shirts and handbags and mugs. There's also a bonus extra question that has extra content. In each episode, we go deeper into our faith and the questions that we're wrestling with, but we also do this extra question uh, to jump in and to share about, and and uh, patrons get to hear how we answer that question. There's discounts on our store. You get access to any future online D&D campaigns. You can easily access all of our Patreon content through our Spotify page, where it says exclusive content for subscribers. That could be you folks. And all that being said, you get the satisfaction that you help us uh, keep the lights on and keep us moving forward with, with our software, our marketing, our equipment, staying current in the podcast game. Uh, we love Systematic Ecology. We hope you do too. Support us moving forward. Thank you for all that you are. We know there's a lot of great choices and content out there, and you choose to listen to Systematic Ecology. Thanks, folks. We love you. Peace. Yeah, this is like the first stumbling block for, mm -hmm. for like class 1A. Which I like because I don't like it when someone always wins. It's not realistic. You're going to have to take some L's. Yeah, which is why I still think Bakugo should have lost to Muscular here. But like Koda distracted him right yeah. before Muscular was going to kill him. But yeah, no, he should have he should have lost. He should have lost. It's, it's like Luffy and um, Crocodile all over again. Because did you freeze? Nope. Oh, okay. I was like, wait. Very good at being still. Good job. I am not. So any other things that might have stuck out to you in this episode besides you thinking Coda's parents were just not strong enough? Hey, I'm just saying. They, You know, there's like a whole system to deploy heroes and the heroes are ranked for a reason. You just think they went over the head? A little bit. But doesn't how they have it, like, you have different areas to patrol. So just because someone is stronger than you. And oh, yeah. It's bad world building. It's what? It's bad world building. Mm. What's the point of having a highest ranked hero if he's only in like one prefecture? Yeah, that's it is what it is. It's kind of like, like, I'm just thinking how I'm not I'm trying to like think because I don't want to offend anyone. But I'm just kind of thinking even with like the the world's doctors and whatnot, like you have people with money they're able to like fly these specialists from asia and whatnot to like have these like heart transplants where if you need a heart transplant you might a crappy hospital is the only thing you have in your area in network and you have to get like a third rate doctor so it's kind of just the look of the draw if you think about mm -hmm. it same with the heroes wrong place wrong time just not yeah. strong enough but uh fumikage dark shadow this was this was the arc that made people think like oh yeah he's him sleeper hit but you know then he just kind of wasn't but it was awesome to see how strong dark shadow actually was here mm -hmm. and then like rarely again didn't he lose control of dark shadow a little bit mm -hmm. yeah so you kind of yeah, saw he was, he was telling them to like run away or they would die mm -hmm. impressive i'm trying to think of any other characters who um stood out of course minetta did nothing um yeah makes sense i think froppy was also like pretty much any characters who did not have fighting skills conveniently were at the um at the end having to just wait yeah they Which uh i think like the ones that didn't fight very well they also just kind of showed that they have really good search and rescue potential like froppy mm -hmm. which i mean just, like a side makes sense i'm not gonna try and negotiate a hostage uh situation i'm gonna go bake a cake i know what my skills are yeah hmm I don't know. I'm kind of mixed. I feel like if I get the opportunity, I'm going to try to take it. You're going to try and negotiate a hostage situation? Yeah, I don't know if I'm good at it if I, until I try, right? Until the hostages all die. But we got to try. Someone's got to be there. Maybe not, uh, maybe, maybe not the, the full talk down, but, you know, I could stall for a little while until we get a real hostage negotiator. Yeah, that's true. It's like CPR. Know. You do CPR until the ambulance comes up. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, any other... Thoughts, questions, concerns, 
Uh, nope. Siri should have ended here. Deku should have died. I mean, I'm not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong on this one. I semi agree. I'm interested. I don't read the manga, so I'm interested to see how the next anime season is going to go because it did around this time. It lost my interest for a little bit. It's going to be wild. I can't wait. I'm buckling up right now. So awesome, guys. If you enjoyed this little rant, maybe our unpopular opinions that Deku should have lost this fight, make sure you let us know. Let us know how bad of a job we're doing. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you check out past episodes that we have gone through every single episode of My Hero Academia up into this arc. Um, Also, if you want to keep up to date make sure you like us uh rate and review whichever podcast platform that you have and thank you for all of our patreon supporters we could not have done this without you make sure you stay a little bit later and you get to hear our bonus question that i promise i have thought of before this very moment it's it's a good one and make sure you like us on discord so you will follow us on discord so we can continue the conversation even after the show Okay, tell me a recommendation, TJ, before I end. I'm actually, I'm going to go with uh, Demons of the Far Realm. It's really good. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily full metal level, but, you know, what is? So it's not really fair, you know? It's really good. It has interesting story. It's got an interesting world and really cool power system. I so. am going to go with Bombing. Oh, Shadow Realm. It's Shadow Realm, not Far Realm. I knew that sounded wrong. Mm, far Realm. I'm going to say um, Bongo, or Bongo, I don't know how you really say it, Stray Dolls, Stray Dogs. Bongo, Bongo, Bongo. Stray Dogs. Yeah, I read the manga, so I'm not sure exactly how they said it, because um, I read it so much. That's what I was going to do for Manga Mustard, but we haven't gotten a chance to record it yet. So if you like detective work in anime and some crazy supernatural abilities, check it out. Now, the official ending. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, we are all a chosen people. A Gitam of Priest. Consider subscribing on YouTube where you can get some uh, some other stuff. You get exclusive series like our comic book catch up, manga mustard, drinks with Tejas, and a companion series we do each year to go with our annual theme. You also get access to Friday Night Frights and Wednesday Night Weeaboo and Spidey Swing Buys with Christian Ashley. Um, you get access to other exclusive shorts like uh, what I'm going to be doing soon are non-canon, where I'm going to be reviewing different IPs that are outside of canon from our favorite fandoms or the Bible and discussing whether or not it should be canon. You also can get a short of Will's Wednesday pull list. So if you're into comic books, Will goes through his favorites of each week's pull list for himself. You also get other bonuses over there. Um, most of our surprise content will put straight to youtube going live over there that you can check out and a lot of our regular episodes are also posted on youtube if you just want to see our smiling faces hey guys christian here to talk to you about the ant network that is the amazon ministry podcasting network that's what we do for all of us here together you can follow the whole network in a single feed on spotify at amazon ministries podcast or on the network page on apple Podcasts to just see what we're all doing and what are we doing well we have plenty of things here we've got the homily you love pastor will you love you want to hear pastor will preach you hear the man doing a homily there? It's amazing. The man does spectacular work for Holy Trinity Lutheran, Lutheran Church in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Then we have the Whole Church Podcast. If you want to hear Joshua and TJ talk to different people from around the church who have very different views on how things should go, check it out there. If you want to go to my seminary life, you want to get some more Brandon Knight in your life, who doesn't want more of that? Go there, hear about the man, uh, discuss his time at seminary, which is what he used to do. Now he's on other topics. And just head out there for what the rest of the man can do. I uh, hear a lot of good stuff that way. Uh, now you can head over to Let Nothing Move You. That's my podcast where I go through the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I started with uh, with Luke, then I went to Romans. Now I'm in Genesis, and I'm moving on from there. It's a good time if you want to hear uh, how I view the Bible, how things should go there. You can do that. You can go to Dummy for Theology, where you can hear Joshua Noel discuss the various theological topics that he, he has there in the attempt to show every side of big discussions leaving you with more questions and answers. If that infuriates you like me, but you still want to listen, head out that way. You can go to the Bible After Hours. We have the foul mouth preacher there, and he's going to deliver things that are not ready for every ear to hear, but sometimes you need someone to be a little filthy out there just to give a more progressive view of the church to challenge the status quo of what is happening here. Do you agree with him? Do you not like him? How are you going to know if you don't listen to him? And finally, we have 
uh, say best for last, the Clydes. Taylor and Elizabeth Clyde, you need some more pangalangan in your life, like all of us do, then head out there, see what's going on in their own life, in their own ministry, so you can hear the devotions and everything going on in their lives. Uh, once again, that's the Anna's Out Ministries Podcasting Network, AMP, and we love you guys. See you next time.